The top stories tonight in Y News. The Senate Blue Ribbon Committee has recommended administrative and criminal charges against an agriculture official and three former sugar regulatory admission officials over the controversial sugar order number four. The number of jobless Filipinos decreased in July, but there were more underemployed Filipinos during the month. After two straight months of reduction, Meralco is increasing electricity rates for the month of September. The missing suspect in Canada's stabbing massacre is dead following his capture. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Thursday, the 8th of September, 2022. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the Philippines and in other parts of the world. I am William Theo. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UN TV News and Rescue social media channels. I am Hardy Delgado. First in the news, in his recently concluded state visits to Indonesia and Singapore, President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. was able to secure investment commitments. The said investment deals could provide Filipinos with thousands of job opportunities. Nel Maribohok will tell us why. President Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. hoped that investments in renewable energy data centers, e-commerce, broadband technology, government housing, and agriculture would support the nation's economic recovery efforts and provide more jobs for Filipinos. A 374.57 billion peso investment in Singapore alone is anticipated to provide jobs for 15,000 Filipino workers. In his first State of the Nation address, the President made the point that one of his promises was to secure foreign investments. Gagawin natin lahat na itong mga sinimulaan dito sa una kong state visit ay maging makabuluhan at may itatapos natin hanggang maramdaman na ng pangkaraniwan na taong bayan ang investment na yan at mararamdaman kung gano'ng karami ang dinalang trabaho, gano'ng karami ang dinala na bagong kita na ibibigay para sa ating mga kababayan. The next step of President Marcos' administration, he said, is to translate these deals to actual profits for the Filipino people. Kaya uh, we look forward to doing the work, the detailed work that is necessary to bring all of these proposals to fruition. And that is what we are all now going to uh, bend ourselves to this work. We will uh, uh, not stop until we can come back and say, itong mga nasimula na MOU, itong mas nasimula na letters of intent, ay nagkaroon na ng resulta. The President announced last night in his arrival speech that he had signed many packs covering different areas of cooperation which he said can be translated to 14.36 billion US dollars or 804.78 billion pesos in investment pledges. Nel Maribohok, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. The number of unemployed Filipinos in the nation is at its lowest since the pandemic began, while the palace thinks it's a result of the president's economic strategy. Dante Amento tells us why. The country's unemployment rate was reported by the Philippine Statistics Authority to have decreased to 5.2% in July 2022 or 2.6 million Filipinos without jobs. It is less than the unemployment rates of 5.7% in April 2022 and 7.2% or 3.23 million people in July 2021. Nitong Hulyo 2022, ang employed persons o bilang ng may trabaho o negosyo ay naitala sa 47.39 million. Ito ay mas mataas ng 1.76 million kaysa sa naitala noong Abril 2022 na nasa 45.63 million at higit na mas mataas kumpara sa bilang noong Hulyo 2021 
na nasa 41.67 million lamang. National Statistician and Civil Registrar General Undersecretary Dennis Mapa explained that the opening up of the economy following the removal of strict restrictions and lockdowns is one of the factors in the decrease of the number of unemployed Filipinos. Isa sa mga um, kondisyon ay uh, ano na tayo, no? relax na yung kondisyon, uh, bu bumabalik na sa, sa trabaho, uh, 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 may mga economic activities na kaya Uh, na-absorb nga yung, yung uh, additional na uh, labor force participation uh, dito sa, sa July at uh, uh, bumaba ang uh, ating uh, unemployment rate. Meanwhile, according to Press Secretary Trixie Cruz Angeles, it is only one of the direct effects of President Ferdinand Marcos Jr.'s economic recovery strategy. Labor Department Secretary Bienvenido Laguesma promises to help the business sector to have an ease of doing business, creating more jobs. Kami naman po magpo-provide ng enabling environment na sana po ay friendly, uh, meron pong ease in doing business. Ang kanila pong mga ginagawa ay uh, hindi naman siguro masyadong nasasaklawan ng mga pulisiya na magiging deterrent po sa expansion ng kanilang negosyo. Dante Amen to UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Several health professionals recommend re-evaluating the recommendation to lift the requirement to wear a face mask in open areas. JP Nunez will tell us why. The recommendation to lift face mask policy in outdoor setting is still premature in the opinion of some health experts at this time. Dr. Maricar Limpin, immediate past president of the Philippine College of Physicians, recommends that the Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases reconsider its decision. Dr. Limpin concludes that once the policy is approved, COVID-19 booster uptake will decline as the public becomes complacent, causing more infection for the public in the long run. Kung ang isang tao ay magkaroon ng COVID-19, ano ang mangyayari? Sa isang nagtatrabaho, ibig sabihin mag-absent siya sa trabaho. So that uh, will have an effect doon sa productivity ng tao. Sa isang mag-aaral, ano ang ibig sabihin niyan? Kaya hindi siya makakapasok sa eskwelahan. So mas malaki ang epekto, hindi magandang epekto ng pagkakaroon ng COVID-19 infection kahit na sabihin pa natin mild lang ang infection na yan. Dr. Nina Gloriani, chairperson of the Vaccine Expert Panel, reiterates this view and believes that it will be more dangerous for the vulnerable sector when they interact with unmasked people. Para sa akin, ako, ang hindi naman problema ang pagmamas uh, ng mga Pilipino. Sana ituloy na lang muna natin at saka bantayan natin ano magiging trend. Advocate for health reform Dr. Anthony Liatron said in a statement that this proposal is still premature at this time. While it attempts to strike a balance between health and the economy, the country will be too vulnerable. Dr. Ronjin Solante, an infectious disease expert, suggested in an interview that lifting of face masks should be done on areas where there is lesser COVID infection. However, the Department of Health made it clear that the agency's real position is to continue the mask mandate. However, information was presented at the IATF meeting that suggests that opening up the economy is necessary. JP Nunez, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. After learning that a Philippine Airlines passenger on a trip to Hong Kong tested positive for monkeypox virus, the Department of Health stated that it is still awaiting the official report from Hong Kong authorities. According to DOH officer in charge, Maria Rosario Vergere, they are still figuring out whether the alleged person is a citizen of the Philippines. Vergere added it is not yet clear if the patient contracted the monkeypox here in the Philippines. This patient was the first reported case of monkeypox in Hong Kong. According to reports, this patient is a 30-year-old male who has recently visited the United States and Canada in addition to the Philippines. 
In other news, a mobile wallet service provider Gcash rolled out a username anonymity feature to enhance users' data protection. In its latest application update, Gcash now hides some letters in the recipient's first name when sending money using the application's Express Send. The update is an added layer of customer protection, said Gcash Chief Information Security Officer Mark Frogoso in a statement on Thursday as the recipient's name in the Send Money service was previously visible for convenience and to help verify the intended recipient. According to Frogoso, the Gcash system has not had a data breach or leak and the com company's around 66 million users' data integrity is still intact. For improved security and easier access to transaction history, Gcash has also moved transaction confirmations from text messages to its mobile app's inbox. The Manila Electric Company, or Emeralco, is raising power rate for the month of September after two straight months of reduction. Ashra Kadapan Jr. tells us why. Power plants utilize the United States dollars in their procurement of fuel imported from other countries. As the Philippine peso continues to weaken against the U.S. dollar, suppliers of the electricity of the Manila Electric Company also increase its charges. This results to higher generation charge, which forces an upward adjustment on the rates of Meralco. Now, what is the reason behind uh, the adjustment? Uh, well, it's basically the higher fuel costs and weaker peso, which pushed the generation cost upwards. So for for the generation charge uh, for this September, it was based on the um, uh, exchange rate at the end of August. So it was uh, at that time it was 56.15 uh, pesos per one US dollar. Uh, in comparison for the the previous month, the preceding month of that, uh, it was 55.13. With this, after two consecutive months of reduction, Meralco increases its rate for the month of September by about 39 centavos per kilowatt hour. It is equivalent to a 78 peso increase in the bill of a typical residential customer who consumes 200 kilowatt hour per month, 117 pesos for those consuming 300 kilowatt hour, 156 pesos for 400 kilowatt hour, and 195 pesos for those consuming 500 kilowatt hour. Meralco, however, says the rate was somehow mitigated by the implementation of the refund ordered by the Energy Regulatory Board. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. And for the news abroad. In the recent Eastern Economic Forum, Russia's President Vladimir Putin threatened that energy supplies to the West will be fully cut if they continue to cap the prices on Russia's imports, or exports rather. Putin mentioned that it is a stupid idea and would only lead to economic problems in Europe. He added that the European Union will be breaching their contracts if they decide to continue the caps on Russian exports. Putin claims he has no problem in shutting down the supplies to West as he ensured that Russia can easily find new consumers in the Asian market. Europe imports their gas, about 70% of their gas and oil from Russia, but members of the EU have guaranteed to rely less on Russian energy after Russia's invasion on Ukraine. For the first time, High-resolution footage of the RMS Titanic has been made available, allowing spectators to see the famous shipwreck up close. Neri Sadando will tell us the details live. Yes, Nerisa. Good evening, Marielle. Thanks to a video captured by Ocean Gate Expeditions, the wreck Titanic is now viewable in 8K quality, which is said to be the highest screen resolution available. The new stunning footage of RMS Titanic in a horizontal resol resolution of 8,000 pixels means there's an unprecedented level of detail and color that's never been seen before. With the new 8K footage, scientists and maritime archaeologists will be able to characterize the decay of the ship more precisely, according to Ocean Gate Expedition's President Stockton Rush. 
Ocean Gate runs expeditions that's worth $250,000 for people to see the 110-year-old shipwreck lying 2.4 miles below the surface of the North Atlantic. Research scientists, Titanic historians, together with civilians who were trained as mission specialists, were on board the recent seven-day expedition to the bottom of the sea. They have captured precise details of the shipwreck, such as the name of the anchor maker, Noah Hingley and Sons Limited, which, according to Titanic expert and diver Lori Golden, is now obvious on the port side anchor of the ship, unlike in old images captured by previous generations of camera technologies. The company already has plans for its May 2023 expedition. It said aspiring mission specialists who want to join or support should reach out. Ariel? All right. Thank you, Nerissa Dando, for that live report. We'll share more global stories with you later, but for now, back to you, William and Harleen. Thank you, Marielle. 14 out of the 17 members of the Senate Blue Ribbon Committee approved the committee report containing its recommendations as a result of its inquiry on the sugar importation controversy. A dispositive portion of the 75-page committee report was read out in today's hearing, including the recommended filing of charges against Agriculture Undersecretary Leocadio Sebastian, former SRA Administrator Hermenegildo Serafica, and former board members Roland Beltran and Aurelio Valderrama Jr. The report says preliminary evidence showed that the officials have committed administrative offenses which are serious dishonesty, grave misconduct, gross neglect of duty, conduct prejudicial to the best interest of service, and gross insubordination. Filing of criminal charges were also recommended, which are Anti-Graft and Corrupt Practices Act, Anti-Agricultural Smuggling Act, and Article 177 of the Revised Penal Code due to usurpation of official functions. Bakit sila nakasuhan? Base sa ebidensya, based on proof of facts, the individuals mentioned in the dispositive portion are those are those found liable because of the weight of evidence documentary and testimony wise the panel also recommended to amend the sugarcane industry development act of 2015 and other laws to ensure transparency and accountability in issuing import permits and other critical issuances another is to expand the sra board to eight members to represent the consumers sugar industry workers and other stakeholders Senate Minority Leader Coco Pimentel says the Minority Bloc will, will release a separate report on the sugar importation mess probe. Pimentel did not sign the report, while Senate Deputy Minority Leader Risa Honteveros made a dissenting opinion. Uh, there were people who were persistently asking for approval, decision, or feedback persistently and their uh, requests for information or advice or decision were purposely not replied to not not responded to eh, ngayon, uh, you want to you want them to go to jail when asked if Executive Secretary Vic Rodriguez is now off the hook, Senate Blue Ribbon Committee Chairperson Francis Tolentino says there was no evidence to counter his testimony. The panel's report will be reported out in the Senate plenary on Monday, September 12. Meanwhile, former Agriculture Undersecretary Leocadio Sebastian declines to comment on the Senate's recommendation to file charges against them over the sugar importation mess. Leocadio stated that before making any further comments, he would like to see the findings of the Senate Committee's report. Meanwhile, former SRA Administrator Hermenegildo Serafica 
stressed before a joint committee investigation in Congress that they are simply carrying out their duties as SRA officials and reiterated that nobody pressured them into signing Sugar Order Number 4. In this case of SO4, nobody influenced the members of the board, including me. There is no consideration of whatsoever, Your Honor. My conscience is clear. Amidst high domestic demand, the province of Batanes has an oversupply of native garlic. The provincial government encourages people to buy local produce. Ray Palayo will tell us why. Out of the 25 tons of garlic that their local farmers produced, Batanes Governor Marilu Kaiko claimed that they had already sold about 5 tons. The official said that the local government offered to purchase the product that was previously purchased by the Department of Agriculture. These garlic are organic and were grown in Itbayat, which is the farthest island in the north of the Philippines. Nagawa ako dun sa mga farmers at sa kro ay uh, baka humatis-carries po silang magtanim kung uh, hindi mabili kanilang uh, produkto po. Agriculture spokesperson under Secretary Christine Evangelista stated that they had already spoken with Batanes officials to assist in facilitating the marketing of garlic. The official noted that native garlic is facing difficulties including size and price. Even though it is tastier than the imported, it is pricer. Yung maliit na garlic ng Batanes, yun po ang ating pinopromote ngayon and we are trying to make our institutional buyers shift to this kind of variety. Dahil sabi nga po natin, kahit maliit yan, eh, masarap yung garlic na yan eh, from Batanes. The price of imported garlic is 100 pesos per kilogram in Marikina public market. During dry season, Justin usually sells native garlic but he said it costs 300 pesos or more per kilogram. Meron din po naghahanap pero mas gusto na nila yan. Oh, kesa dun sa ano, kasi yung mga mayama lang naman talaga nakakabili ng native. <laughs> mas masarap ang native. Mm -hmm. Opo, lalo na kung magigisa ka. Mm -hmm. Kasi pagka ganyan, minsan wala nang lasa halos eh. Depende na lang kung kailangan damihan mo na lang para magkaroon po ng lasa. Farmers can seek the Department of Agriculture's assistance or inform them of the product even prior to producing it to be able to find market for it to avoid the waste of agricultural product. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Philippine National Police, or PNP, disputes the claim made by the Philippine Chinese Chamber of Commerce and Industry that 56 kidnapping cases occurred across the nation in just 10 days. Lea Ilagan reports why. In contrast to the claim of the Philippine Chinese Chamber of Commerce and Industry, or PCCI, that there have been 56 cases of kidnapping in just 10 days. The Philippine National Police has only recorded 27 cases of kidnapping since January. PNP spokesperson Police Colonel Jean Fajardo said that 27 cases from January to September this year are lower compared to 38 in 2021 based on data of the PNP anti-cybercrime group. On the 27 kidnapping cases, Colonel Fajardo adds, 11 have been solved, 4 have been cleared, or the case has been filed in court. Additionally, 12 are still being investigated. Po, wala silang maipakita na listahan po nung 56. That is the main reason ko kung bakit po sila nakipag-ugnayan po sa PNP AKG para linawin nga po yung nareceive nilang report na meron na pong 56 kidnapping cases for the last 10 days. No? Three of the 11 solved cases are kidnaps for ransom. Seven of them include Pogo, while one has to do with casinos. 20 of the kidnapping cases, according to Colonel Fajardo, were committed by foreign nationals. So yung Pogo-related nga po dyan ay uh, ang, uh, ang involved po dyan ay uh, yun nga po, may 18 po na Chinese national at uh, Isa po ang Taiwanese at ang isa po ay uh, Vietnamese. So 20 po yung uh, uh, mga na-involve po na mga foreign national dito po sa mga Pogo-related cases po for 2022. 
The PCCI had priorly reported that they had received a report on 56 kidnapping cases in the country within 10 days, saying that these are discomforting and cause fear among the Filipino Chinese community. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Formal administrative charges have been filed against five teachers in Cavite involved in the alleged sexual harassment reported in Bacoor National High School. Jenny Simhenta reports. Five out of seven Bacoor National High School teachers who were accused of sexual harassment are currently facing formal charges. According to DepEd spokesperson attorney Michael Poa, the fact finding or preliminary investigation on the alleged sexual abuse was already finished, and the five were charged with grave misconduct, conduct prejudicial to the best of the service, and violation of DepEd Order Number no. 40 Series of 2012. Binigyan po natin itong sa Cavite, particularly yung mga teachers ng five days within which to reply. Uh, dito po kasi sa ating administrative process sa civil service, binibigyan po natin ng pagkakataon yung mga uh, nasasakdal to choose between a proceeding na by position paper only or by trial. DepEd kept urging the other victims to file their complaints to give formal charges against the two more accused teachers. Nung nakausap po natin yung SDO at yung legal department, kulang pa po kasi yung ebidensya to identify yung dalawa pa out of the seven. No? So kaya lima lang po ang naisuhan ng formal charge na lumabas para po makapagbigay ng kanilang affidavit, statement or ebidensya at para po mabigyan din natin ng formal charge. Hindi lang itong pito, uh, pati na rin yung iba na sinasabing nag-commit ng sexual harassment po. Victims can contact the Secretary's office directly by email at depedabusereport at gmail.com or by phone at 8633-1942 or 8635-9817 or 0995-921-8461. Janice Enhente, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The second suspect in a stabbing in Canada that left 10 people dead and injured another 18 has been taken into custody. But soon after being arrested, he was taken to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. Bianca Quijano will tell us why. Royal Canadian Mounted Police or RCMP Commanding Officer Rhonda Blackmore stated that Miles Sanderson, the second suspect of the mass stabbing, is no longer at large and a threat to the public. This after he was captured by the police. This evening, our province is breathing a collective sigh of relief as Miles Sanderson is no longer at large. I can confirm that he is no longer a threat and there is no risk to the public related to this investigation. A reported sighting of Miles Sanderson Tuesday at the James Smith Cree Nation prompted police to surround the area and issue an alert. Then on Wednesday, after a three-day manhunt, authorities spotted Sanderson, rammed his vehicle and he surrendered. At approximately 3.30 p.m. local time, he was arrested by police near Rostern, Saskatoon and taken into custody. According to RCMP Commanding Officer Rhonda Blackmore, shortly after he was arrested, he went into medical distress and was transported to a hospital in Saskatoon. He was pronounced deceased at the hospital. Shortly after his arrest, he went into medical distress. Nearby, EMS were called by police to attend the scene and he was transported to a hospital in Saskatoon. He was pronounced deceased at the hospital. Prior to his death, Miles was charged with first-degree murder, attempted murder, as well as breaking and entering. The Saskatchewan RCMP also thanked the public for their diligence in providing pertinent information about potential sightings of Miles Sanderson. Meanwhile, the Canadian coroner identified the 10 people killed in the mass stabbing, and they range from ages 23 to 78. There was an additional 18 people injured in the attacks, with one of them a teenager, and the rest of them adult men and women. 
Bianca Quijano, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Users of Google Chrome are urged to upgrade their browsers to the most recent version as soon as possible. Ia Devera will tell us why live. Yes, Ia? Marielle Chrome users were recently informed of a possible cyber threat known as the Zero Day Vulnerability that hackers have exploited in the browser's prior search engine system. Google, on the other hand, recently released a new version of Chrome that they are now urging users to update to in order to protect themselves from hackers as well as 20 other vulnerabilities. The flaw in vulnerability, which is CVE-2022-3075, was found in Chromium's Mojo system API and has been said to result in sufficient data validation. This is a high-severity threat which hackers can use to break through security protection by using code to attack Chrome users and other Chromium browsers. Google decided to keep bug details and links restricted within an unnamed third-party library until a majority of Chrome users have updated their browsers. Back to you, Marielle. Thank you, Ia De Vera, for that live report. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. I am Maria Latoza reporting live from Perth, Australia. Good evening. The Professional Regulation Commission has been urged to address issues among teachers who were experiencing delays in the renewal of their license due to their debt. Eileen Cerudo will tell us why. Several teachers with unpaid debt are being tagged by the Professional Regulation Board which delays the renewal of their professional license. Mukhang hindi po naman tama yung may utang tagging. Kasi po, uh, lalo po natin nadideprive siguro ang uh, mga teachers upang magkaroon ng pagkakataon. Kung sakali man pong totoo may utang, makabayad sa utang. During the budget hearing of the House Committee on Appropriations for the Department of Labor and Employment, ACT Teachers Party List Representative Franz Castro said the PRC has a resolution which includes unpaid debts as a basis to tag a teacher. The lawmaker said loan sharks use this resolution to take advantage of teachers. Yung mga teacher na may mga utang ay tinatag sa PRC para mahirapang mag-renew ng license. Yan po yung ginawa ng PRC at meron pong um, apektado po ang mga teachers natin. Uh, karamihan po nakausap ko sa Central Luzon. The PRC, however, clarified that the teacher should not be tagged just because of unpaid debts. According to the agency, only those facing complaints and other cases will be tagged and not have their teaching license renewed. For those who wish to be untagged should file an application to the PRC. The application will undergo review and verification before the PRC can make a decision on the case. The PRC also said they will review their policies and assured to provide better service to teachers. The Department of Labor and Employment will also investigate on the said issue. Amin po nga uh, riripasuhin uh, yung uh, nabanggit po ninyo, uh, Congresswoman uh, Castro, na resolution kung yan po ay uh, nandiyan pa. Sapagkat uh, bahagi naman po ng uh, Department of Labor and Employment as a tax agency ang PRC. The official also said teachers should be given opportunities to do their duties. Eileen Cerudo, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Several government agencies and telecommunication companies or telcos have expressed support on passing the SIM card registration bill. This as more and more subscribers continue to receive personalized or targeted smishing messages. In today's hearing of the Senate Committee on Public Services, its chairperson Senator Gracebo says the provision on mandatory social media registration would be likely removed in the new version of the bill. The bill was earlier vetoed by former President Rodrigo Duterte due to the said provision. Also, during the hearing, Poe criticized National Telecommunications Commission or NTC Commissioner Gamaliel Cordoba for not memorizing their hotline for text scams. 
Kung hindi nga po ninyo alam, Mr. Chairman, kung anong hotline number ninyo, eh kami pa kaya? I, I will get po. Nasa website po kasi namin, Madam Chair. So we get complaints po from there and then we block po the numbers that are complained of. You know, I'm very disappointed. Ha? This is something, if you were really serious about this issue, this would be at the top of your head and you would really tell the public, this is the number that you call and you text. Cordoba notes that for this year, they have blocked 800 numbers stemming from complaints which Senator Poe calls as tragic due to its small number compared to billions of mobile subscribers. Meanwhile, a blaze in a cigarette warehouse in Marikina City is still being fought by the Bureau of Fire Prote Preven Prevention. This morning at about 3 in the morning, the fire began and only a few minutes later, it was upgraded to second alarm. At 6.45 a.m., it was under control, but the BFP has not declared a fire out until this hour. The BFP explains that warehouse fires typically take time since there are several fuel sources inside the building. The BFP has not yet verified that anyone was injured in the said incident. The Marikina City government on their part advises residents to stay indoors due to health hazards brought about by the smoke from the blazing cigarette warehouse. Some residents, however, complain about the smoke. Alagang masakit na sa ilong, masakit sa dibdib. Yung mga residente, halos di na lumalabas. Siguro nga nahihirapan din namin nga dahil nga sa usok doon na nanggagaling doon sa kabila. Eh. Kahit usok ka na, hindi, hindi okay sa akin. Kasi sa edad kong to, nag, nag nene ako eh. Hindi, kaya ako lumabas dahil para sa asalob ng bahay, naaami ko na eh. Our Kasang Bahay, as the world faces these trying times amid the pandemic caused by coronavirus, we are inviting everyone to join the Global Prayer for Humanity from Monday to Friday, 9.30 p.m. Philippine time through the social media accounts of Members Church of God International. And before we close, we will leave you with a word, giving glory to God. From the book of Colossians, chapter 3, verse 23, it says, And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily, as to the Lord, and not unto men. And those are the reasons behind the news, September 8, 2022. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. I am Harleen Delgado. And because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo. We serve the people. We give glory to God.